Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be making our sliding menu. Um, so by hitting this hamburger, some people call it a hamburger menu button or just a menu button. I call it a hamburger menu because it looks like hamburger. Uh, but if you click this, there's going to be a menu that slides out. You've probably seen this in other apps that you've used um, in, in either games or apps. And so we're going to we're going to make a really crude one today. And and uh, so, yeah, we'll get started with that. Uh, first thing we're going to do now, I'll probably fast forward some of this because some of this you've already seen uh, how to do. But I'll put a little um, card that pops down at the, at the top right of your screen uh, so you can go back and review some things if, if, if we if you need to. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is uh, we have this panel here where we're going to create another panel and we're going to size it for our menu screen. So we'll what we'll do is we'll go to Canvas. We'll right click, go to UI uh, panel. And it overlays this panel here, right? Now, when you first create a panel, it's if you look over here where the color is, you're going to see that it applies this transparency. It, 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 the alpha channel it has a, a value of 100. Uh, and what we can do is we can put it all the way to 255, and that will make it um, a white panel, right? So that's what I'm going to do for now. Uh, if you'd like yours to be semi-transparent, that's fine. You can play with the alpha channels uh, however you wish. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're now we're going to click down here and we're going to start trying to resize this panel. And we really don't know what size we need until we make our buttons. And uh, so for reference, let's go back to our Marvel app. And I am going to reload that. Uh, again, this is the prototype that I was working with, right? Uh, if I click this arrow button here in, in our in our game, in our app, uh, that's a, the hamburger button, right? But if I click that, it's going to pop up with this. And each one of these are buttons. So we're going to mimic that as close as we can, okay? So let's go back to Unity. We've got this app. We've got the uh, kind of the start of our panel. Now let's add in our buttons. And we need, how many buttons do we need? We need one. Uh-oh. Go back. We need one two, three, four, we need five buttons. And then we have this image at the bottom, this is the X for the TEDx, right? So let's try to mimic that as much as we can. What we're gonna do is we're going to add in, again, let's go back. See, I just looked and I can't remember. One, two, three, four, we have five. Let's go back to Unity. I've got the panel, I'm gonna right click UI button and I'm gonna go ahead and add in five buttons. <laughs> Okay, now we have our five buttons. I am now going to add in our uh, our image that we had too. And I'm going to apply the arrow to that image. And then we're gonna put that at the top. Now let's go ahead, uh, I'm gonna preserve aspect ratio and then I'm going to resize it so it fits our app. Okay. And I kind of don't like how big these buttons are. I want to make them a little bit bigger. Uh, I feel I feel like they should be a little bit bigger. So we're just going to... So what I did is I, if you didn't see, I, I just chose all these. So if I click there, hit, hold down shift, and click again. It's pretty good. And now we're going to do another UI image. And I'm going to put this at the bottom. And I want to uh, use the X. Um, I don't have the X for TEDx. So what I'm probably going to do, you can find the TEDx one or you can use any image. Uh, I'm just going to use the TEDx image that we already had here. So it looks kind of wonky, but we're going to preserve aspect. There we go. And then we'll just make it fit the whole bottom here. I like that. It's not too bad. Not too bad there. Now we have a little bit of weirdness going on here because our can our panel isn't covering the whole screen. So I'm going to bring that over so it's kind of where it should be. We're going to move that back over to where it should be as well. Okay. Now, since our TEDx is, we're just, I'm going to bring it in a little bit just because I want it to be there. Now, great. 
Now, uh, again, I'm going to go back to the panel here, and I want to anchor this always to the top left of my screen. This doesn't really look the best, um, but you can play with the colors and things if you want later to get a look how, how you'd like it. Or you can design your own uh, your own art and put it in here, right? So I also want to name these buttons uh, their proper name. So let's go back here. Let's look. We have the event, the team, photos, press, and nominations. So let's go back and do that. So the event and the team are the first two. So we're going to go over here. We're going to say the event. Whoop. We're going to say the team. And what, were the, what was the other one? Photos, press, and nominations. So photos. And then press. And then nominations. Cool. So now we have this panel, but right now it's showing in this space. But in reality, what's going to happen is this panel is always, we're going to move it over here. It's always going to live to that part of the screen. So if I change the resolution, it should always be to the left of the screen, right? And you can see that if you look over here, this is what we're going to see on, on our device, right? And you can see that it's always going to be there. And then what happens is when we, when we hit the hamburger button here, we're going to want this guy to move over and be a part of the screen. So we're going to have to do write a little bit of light code for that to work. And what we do is, uh, but there's a couple things we need to set up first. We need to have a space for the program to know that when I start the program, I want this panel to be in this position always so the user doesn't see it. The user should only see it if they hit this button. Uh, so we want to know where this space is in the world. Uh, an easy way to do this is we're going to create two empty game objects. One game object is going to be a, a placeholder for this um, the panel's uh, start position, which is its original position here. And then we're going to have another empty game object that is going to be the panel's position when it's active. And then we'll write code to tell it to move to one position to the other. OK. OK, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go right here at Canvas. We're going to right click and we're going to create an empty game object. And then I am going to duplicate that empty game object. I'm going to call the first game object. I'm going to call it the um, menu underscore panel underscore ridge for original POS for position. OK, so menu panel original position. And again, you can name this whatever you like, uh, just so you know what it is when you're looking at it. OK, and then I'm going to write I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to call this menu underscore panel underscore active underscore position. So it's menu panel active position. So we have a menu panel original position. I'm going to make that a capital P. And we have a menu panel active position. And then for the for the original position, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on panel. I'm going to go over to my inspector. See this little wheel right here? So I click on that. I'm going to hit copy component. And that copies this whole component here, this rec transform. And then I'm going to click on the menu panel original position. Go right there. And then I'm going to hit paste component values. So now we have this empty game mode that has the same transform. It's got all the position, scale, anchors that the menu does. And that's what you want. And then what I'll do next is I'm going to take that panel. I'm going to, I'm going to click on the panel. I'm going to move it to where I want it to be when it's active. Mm, that's pretty good. Maybe we can move it over just a tad. Maybe like right there. It looks pretty good. And then I will go back. I'm going to go back to the inspector while it's active. I'm going to copy the component because now when I copy the component, it's going to have totally new position 
uh, relative to the canvas, okay? Which is what we want. So I'm gonna copy that component. And then I'm gonna click on the active position, menu panel active position. And then I'm going to go over my inspector right here. I click there and I'm gonna paste component values. So now if I go over here, my hierarchy, I can click on the original position. You can see where the original position is gonna be. I can click on active position too. All right, so I'm gonna get my panel and I'm just gonna move it back off screen. Okay. So now you've done the first part of the setup that you would need for that to work. And uh, Okay, so now that we got all that set up, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, go ahead and start uh, writing a little bit of code that will help control the movement of this, um, of this menu panel when we want it to be active, right? <clears throat> so let's uh, go ahead and go to our scripts. We've got the button logic script and we will add to that in a second. Uh, but what I wanna do now, I'm gonna add a script and I'm gonna call it uh, my movement script, right? So I'm gonna right click here, I'm gonna create, C sharp script. I'm going to name this menu panel uh, movement. Okay. Really simple. I'm going to double click on it and we're going to open that in our editor. All right. So we've got this class here. I'm going to just do a little bit of housekeeping. Okay. So we've got uh, the menu panel movement. We've got everything we he here that we need. So the first thing I wanna do is in here, I'm gonna declare uh, a couple of public uh, variables. So public, and these are gonna be game objects. So it's gonna be public game object. And I wanna do uh, three of them, right? So the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna name it, um, this is my uh, menu original, so ridge position. So menu or ridge position. I'm gonna make another one, public game object. And we're gonna do it menu uh, active position. And then I'm gonna do one more public game object, which is gonna be a public game object, well, game object. And this is gonna be our menu panel, okay? So just like, uh, so let's go back and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm creating in script a placeholder. So a space for these different things to live, right? That's why they're all public. And we've got their menu original position, menu active position, and menu panel, okay? So if we go back to Unity, you can see that I have, uh, we've got our menu panel. I called it panel. Let me go ahead and rename that now. This is gonna be menu panel, okay? And we've got the menu panel, we've got the original position, and we've got the active position, okay? So, oh, I didn't wanna do that, force quit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Visual Studio and then, um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. We're gonna file, we're gonna save all, and we're gonna have it compile in Unity, and we can see over here that it's compiling. Um, let's clear all this. And since we want this, uh, uh, we kind of want this to be active all the time. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, since we, we had our button logic script attached to our original canvas, I'm gonna go ahead and attach our menu panel uh, movement to that as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag in my, you see over here we got the menu original position, menu active position, and menu panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag my menu panel over to menu panel. And I'm gonna drag the active position over to active position. And then we're gonna do original position over to original position. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our editor. So at the very beginning, what I wanna do is, um, I wanna make sure that when this program is fired, that uh, when, you know, when it starts to run, that our menu panel is always in its original position or start position, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say um, at, at the very start, because this start function gets called, first thing that gets called as soon as the program gets started, right? So we're just gonna double check and make sure that that position gets reset to the position that it should be. So we're gonna put menu panel dot transform 
dot position equals menu panel original position dot transform dot position. Uh -oh, let's go back dot position. Okay. So what this will do with that line of code, it will make sure that our panel is always snapped to that position at the very beginning. And let me show you, show you how that works. We're going to file, save all, make sure that it compiles. Let's go back over to uh, Unity. Make sure that it's compiling here. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll start our program. Okay. You might have seen over here that it moved a little bit. Let me show you that again. So just to see an example, and we can see that it's there. And let's, let's stop that program. Just to show you that, that this does, in fact, work, I'm going to drag my, uh-oh, not that one. I'm going to right, I'm gonna click on panel, and I'm going to drag it just off anywhere else. You can see that position there. That's where we want it to start. You can see this over here. Now, watch what happens. When I hit the play button, our code is going gonna, gonna to get called, and it's going to snap our menu panel over here to that position. Watch this. I'm going to hit the play button. See how that works? So this is good if later you're, um, you're editing or you're playing around and, and you move this panel. Say that you really want to know what this panel looks like when it's moved over, right? So maybe an editor, you've moved this over and then you've kind of forgotten to move it back to where it should be. And you hit the play button. Well, if you hit the play button, it's just going to snap back to where you told it to be, right? So that's, that's really handy, and it's really good practice to, to when you call code, to have it start where it should start, okay? So there you go. You've successfully wrote a piece of code that works, with just a one line of code. Uh, let's go through it here. We have the game object, the menu panel. We've called its transform component. I'm going to go back to Unity and show you. This transform, this is a rec transform, but it's still, it's basically the same thing. You've, you're looking at this component, and you're looking at its position here. All right, and you're making that position equal to, if we go back to our code and look, we're making this position equal to this position. So we're taking this position and we're just passing it over to this position, right? We're taking the position part of that transform, we're taking the position part of this transform and we're putting it into the position part of this transform, right? So to show you, you can keep an eye on it here go to original position, we can see that this position is, the position X over here is a negative 93.1. And again, this is relative to the uh, the canvas. Uh, this position is a negative uh, 194.45. And this is a zero. Okay. And then we can see if we look at that 93.1, 194.45 and zero, it should match that when I start. So let's go ahead and hit start or play. And you can see that it's pretty much given it the same. Now you have this kind of floating, you know, 0 0.1001. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the same, right? So you can see that's, it did exactly what we, we told it to do. It took that position. So all of these three, so um, vector three, and it put those values in, okay? So, uh, so yeah. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to start from here, and then we're going to start adding in the code that we need to make this move back and forth. And it can be a little tricky, but I have my own little personal method that I use uh, to move these back and forth depending on the buttons that we hit. So in the next tutorial, we're going to explore that, and then we're going to put it all together and then show you how that runs, okay? All right, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, go ahead, and um, if you need to review some of the button things, go ahead and do that. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial, and we'll keep coding. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.